Hi students, welcome to Five Point. This is Nisar Ahmed, your mathematics mentor. Hope that you people are doing well during Ramadan days and lockdown days. May God bless you all. So today we will uh, discuss the graph, graph of a quadratic equation. In quadratic equation, we have completed uh, uh, standardization or standard form of a quadratic equation. Then it's how to find the roots of a quadratic equation by any of the three methods, either by using uh, factorization or by using completing the square method or by using the quadratic formula. Then we have discussed, uh, we have uh, derived uh, the formula for the quadratic equation. That's a quadratic formula. We have derived the quadratic formula. And also we have discussed uh, completing square method, how we are going to implement a completing square method in any kind of a problem uh, regarding the quadratic equation. Okay. Then we have discussed. Uh, Formulation of a quadratic equation. How we can formulate quadratic equation I, uh, by using the sum of roots and its product of roots. Okay, we have discussed all those topics. If you have any kind of any, any doubts regarding those kind of uh, topics which we have discussed yet, uh, you can uh, just write that in my comment section, and I will just provide when. Uh, uh, solution accordingly okay i will just uh, elucidate uh, that topic uh, in a great or detailed manner okay so if you have any kind of a doubt over there so today we are going to discuss the graph of an coordinate equation the graph is very much important monster or you can see it's a very much important factor which we are going to discuss in mathematics why because in through graph you can extract immediates of information you can extract immediates of things uh, regarding any kind of a problem or regarding any kind of a situation what kind of a situation is uh, represented in mathematics or what kind of a situation is represented in engineering you can extract immediates of problems over there by using a graph so graph is very much important as much as you can have a backbone as much your uh, the importance of your backbone what, are, what what the importance has got a backbone in your body same importance has got a graph in mathematics as far as my perception is concerned my perception very very from person to person but I'm just talking about the graph is very much important so what is graph actually it is nothing but it is simply it is simply the visual representation of a particular situation or you can say whenever we plot the one physical quantity with respect to another physical quantity how much the physical quantity is varying with respect to another physical quantity how much a physical quantity is fluctuating with respect to another physical quantity and represent that thing in a you can say visualize the manner to represent that thing in a you can say that in a pictorial, pictorial way we say that, that that's a graph okay so from graphs you can uh, extract immediate of information immediate of information you can extract from a graph. I'm just you know, repeating it again and again. Graph is very much important, very much important concept. So uh, you might have heard the, uh, this equation. This is ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. This is a general form of what? This is a general form of a straight line. Where a, b, c are constants and x, y, and are variables. Two variables there. Okay. In linear equation, two variables. You might have uh, studied this kind of a concept of that. And general, uh, this is the general form of a linear equation. And in linear equation, if you just look at the graph of a linear equation, you will get obviously a straight line. So graph for a linear equation is basically a straight line. But what about the quadratic equation? If you talk about the quadratic equation, what is its graph and how that looks like? Okay. Let me tell you that thing. Uh, today we are going to discuss that kind of a stuff right now. Okay. So um, uh, we have discussed. Uh, if you had x, x plus y plus 2 is equal to 0, or you can say it is a, say 3x minus y plus 7 is equal to 0, these are the two linear equations. If you just sketch this on a Cartesian plan, you will, you will get what? You will get uh, a straight line, obviously. And if you just sketch this kind of an, um, line on a Cartesian plan, you will get obviously a straight line. But if you just find the value of x and y, to find the value of x and y, what is that actually? That is basically the point where these two lines are going to intersect. If the lines are going to intersect at a particular point, that is the value of x and y at that time. And you can solve, that's why you can solve the pair of linear equations either by graphical method or by, you can say, by, uh, you can say by using an algebraic method, okay? You can solve the, any kind of a uh, system of equations either by algebraically or graphically. So let me tell you that one thing is there. So if 2x plus y is equal to 7, similarly we have... 2x, now you can say we have 4x plus 2y is equal to 8, like this. So these are the uh, two uh, system of equations we have. This is the linear equation over there, this is the linear, uh, linear equation over there. If you just take their, uh, you can say ratio, this is 1 upon 2 and this is 1 upon 2 obviously. That means these two lines are parallel to each other. These two lines are parallel to each other. What does that mean? That if lines are parallel to each other, obviously they are not going to intersect anywhere. When they are not going to intersect anywhere, we can't find the value of x and y at that time. Then we say that this is the condition where it does given solution, where the given system of equations will have 
no oscillation. Why? Because they are the they are the parallel lines and parallel lines never use it to meet at any point. When they are never when they never use it to meet at any point, how come that it is possible to find the value of x and y at that time? Obviously. Okay, so that means how, how to recognize whether the given system of equations are parallel or not parallel. You can recognize that if the ratio, if the ratio of the coefficients of the variables are same or either the coefficients are same itself, then you can say that the given uh, line is a parallel, provided that the constant should be different. If a constant is also same, coefficients are also same, or the coefficients are in a proportion or in a same ratio, and coefficient, uh, constants are also same, then we say that those lines are called coincidental lines. And for coincidental lines, we have infinite number of solutions because they are going to coincide on each other. Okay. So if you just sketch these kind of a graphs, you will get obviously a straight line. Okay. Now we will just display the graph of a quadratic equation. Okay. And you might have discussed the all cases here. That means if we have the general system of equation that's a one x plus b one y plus c one is equal to zero, then we have a two x plus b2 y plus c2 is equal to 0 then you can say that then uh, there are the three cases three cases may emerge from these kind of conditions that is if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2 this is that they are the coincidental lines because all the ratios are same so they are coincidental lines and you will have you will have infinite solution for them okay you will have infinite solution okay if you just go for a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is not equal to c1 by c2 then there are the conditions of a parallel lines and uh, that is basically no solution okay and similarly if you have um, uh, then uh, a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 okay then we you have unique solution at that time then you have unique solution at that time so these are the three conditions you might have heard in the linear equations in two variables if you just uh, sketch, so I mean to say what you can represent graphically. If gra in graph you will get a lines that are parallel to each other, and at that time you will say that is the condition of this one. That is the condition of this one. That means no solution will be at that time. Because what? Whatever we are finding the value of x and y, that means we are finding the values of those points where their lines are going to intersect. If lines are parallel, obviously they are not going to intersect at that time. Then we say that that. Uh, the no, uh, solution for those lines does not exist. Okay, in nutshell, I will say that if you sketch or if you just uh, study graphs keenly, you can extract millions of information or millions of data from that thing or from that very graph. Okay, but it depends upon your perception. It depends upon your understanding. So that means we should understand the graphs full fledgedly, completely in a great sense. Okay. So let me tell uh, give an example of your uh, quadratic equation. If we have a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation let, let y is equal to x square. Obviously, this is an equation. This is a quadratic equation. Obviously, y because x square there is a square of this thing. Okay, so let y is equal to x square. So this means uh, we have a quadratic equation over there. Now you can write it x uh, square minus y is equal to zero. Okay. If you have to sketch graph of it, okay, or you can say uh, this is f of x or p of x, you can have. Then this will be a quadratic problem at that time. You just make a box over there x and y. If x is 0, what is y? y is obviously 0. Okay? Second thing, if x is 1, what is y? y is 1. If x is 2, what is y? y is 4. Okay? If x is minus 1, what is y? y is plus 1. If x is minus 2, what is y? plus 4. Okay? And you can just take um, uh, millions of values over there. If you just um, make a graph of this uh, monster, what you will get? So like this, if we have a graph over here, so we are going to sketch any kind of graph of this given data. Okay. Okay. So this uh, this is a Cartesian plane over here. Okay. This is O. This is x dash. This is x. This is O. This is y. This is y dash. Okay. So then what do you have? You will have this is this, suppose they are giving us one, two, and three, and four, and five. Okay. This is one, two, and three, and four, and five. Okay. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. Okay? Now you have to represent this kind of a situation over there. How you are going to represent that? This is 0, 0. Obviously, this is the point, point at origin. Okay? Then what you have? That is 1, 1. This is the 1, this is the 1. This is the point, this. Okay? Then what you have? That is 2, 4. That is 2 is there. 1, 2, 3, 4. The point is like here. Okay? Then what you have to represent? That is minus 1, minus, minus 1, 1. That is minus 1, 1. This is the point, okay, over there. Okay, then you have minus 2, 4. Then you will go, then minus 2, this is minus 2, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And you will get like this, okay. If you are going to 
And if you are just going to put the value of x more and more, okay, you can say that put the value of x as 3, 4, 5, 6, and you will get the value of y accordingly, okay. Then if you just trace or if you just take a box of these kind of points, okay, if you just join these kind of points, what you will get actually, you will get actually a curve like this. You will get a curve like this. What is this? This is a graph. This is a graph of a quadratic equation. Now, if you just look at this kind of a graph, for linear equation for this ax plus b y plus c is equal to zero. We always get a straight line. But what about this? For quadratic equation, we get what? For quadratic equation, we get a curve. This is a special curve, and this special curve is called a parabola. And this is called a parabola. Parabola. And this is a graph of quadratic equation. If you just uh, check the graph of like this, y square is equal to minus x. Uh, y is equal to uh, suppose minus x square, you will get what kind of a graph over there, and you will get a graph uh, that will be a downward one, okay? So that will be a graph like this. So this kind of a parabola will be this, okay? So based on this kind, so we have uh, four types of parabolas, upward parabola, downward parabola, right hand parabola, left hand parabola. Now it depends upon the situation, what kind of a situation you have, and the graph will be according to that. So in nutshell, we can conclude that the graph for a straight line, is, uh, the graph for a linear equation is straight line always, and for the graph, in, uh, you can say that for a quadratic equation is always a curve, and that curve is called a parabola. So that means we can have four conditions over there, either upward parabola, or downward parabola, or left hand parabola, or right hand parabola. So all the parabola, that this is an, um, in case of an upward parabola and this is in case of a downward parabola and if you have just uh, like this x is equal to if you have uh, x is equal to y square y square and this will be a condition of right hand parabola okay so this is the condition of that is the condition of this okay and similarly you will have if you, this is x is equal to minus y square and you will have this condition okay so that means these are the four kinds of parabolas over there this is uh, upward parabola downward parabola, left hand parabola, and this is the right hand parabola, okay? So that means, graph of quadratic equation is now, that is a curve, and that, those special curves are called parabolas. And you can check uh, the graphs for units of uh, equations, quadratic equations over there, and you can sketch on that the, on your graph paper, okay? You will get the result, so like that, okay? So that means, so we got, so um, for system of linear equations, we will have always a straight line, and for um, quadratic equation, we will have curves, and those curves are called parabolas. Okay, so uh, parabola will be like this: either this upward one, okay, either this downward one, okay, either this left hand one, okay, or this right hand one. Okay, so these kind of uh, these kind of curves you are going to study keenly in eleventh standard. Uh, that is conic sections. Okay, so. This was the graph and quadratic equation, and you can sketch mirrors of graphs for mirrors of equations. Okay. Now uh, today we are also going to discuss. There is a little bit. I will just give you a little bit introduction regarding the cubic equation. Okay. What is the cubic equation? Cubic equation. What is the cubic equation? So the general form of cubic equation is like this: ax cube plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to zero. An equation whose degree is 3 is called a cubic equation. We have learned what is a degree, what is a uh, power, we have learned that, okay? So what is uh, now cubic equation? A cubic equation is that kind of an equation whose degree is 3. Obviously, whose degree is 3, so we can write it here. Its degree will be what? Its degree will be 3, okay? Now, what about its roots? Quadratic equation have got two roots. So what about the cubic equation? It will have obviously three roots. Why? Because we have a theorem over there. A polynomial of any degree has got n roots. This is the degree of the degree of roots. So that means what? That means its roots will be what? Number of roots. So number of roots will be equal to what? Three. Okay? So whether the roots may be complex or the roots may be real, that depends upon the given situation or that depends upon the given equation. If the equation is uh, something like that, we uh, will uh, have an, uh, so you can have, we will have a roots at that time, imaginary, or if we, the equation is uh, given in such a manner, so if we are just going to solve that equation, we will get a real things over there, that, there, that roots will be real, okay? So it depends upon the situation or it depends upon what kind of an equation we have given, okay? So its degree will be 3 and its roots, number of roots will be 3, okay? We got that. Likewise, in uh, 
quadratic equation we have discussed if alpha and beta are the roots of a given quadratic equation we have sum of roots alpha plus beta that's minus coefficient of x upon coefficient of x square and similarly the product of roots is called what that's constant down divided by the coefficient of x square likewise if you take if alpha beta and gamma here uh, obviously there are three roots because this is a cubic equation we will have three roots alpha beta and gamma if alpha beta and gamma are the three roots of a cubic equation uh, then what then what is the relation between the roots? Uh, if we have to find the relation between the roots, how we are going to find that? Let me just uh, uh, tell you that how we are going to find the roots uh, relation and uh, roots of it, uh, relation of uh, roots of a cubic equation. Okay. And remember, in cubic equation, a should not be equal to zero because if a is equal to zero, then no more cubic will exist at that time. That that will be converted into a quadratic equation at that time. So let me tell you that relation. Between roots of cubic equation. Okay. Relationship. Okay. If say let ax square ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d is equal to zero is a given quadratic equation, a given cubic equation, sorry, while a is not equal to zero. Okay. So a is not equal to zero. This is a given cubic equation we have. And let Alpha, beta, and gamma be the roots. Be the roots of given equation. Okay. Then what we have? Then sum of roots. First, we are going to discuss sum of roots. Sum of roots. Sum of roots. That is alpha plus beta plus gamma. Sum of roots. In quadratic equation, we have minus coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. That means what? This is x square plus x plus x square plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Okay, we have their coefficient of x. Here we have minus coefficient of. There we have the degree one less than the uh, quadratic equation. That means uh, it's less than the less degree will be x. Okay, so power of here here is just two. Here it is one. So that is minus coefficient of x there, and here it will be minus coefficient of x square there. Okay. Upon coefficient of x cube uh, x square here. Here will be coefficient of x cube. So that means what will the sum of roots here? Alpha plus beta plus gamma. That is minus coefficient of x square divided by the coefficient of x cube. So you will get what? You will get minus b by a. Okay. Now, now we have there we have then a product of roots only. Okay. Product of roots. Product of and we will have here product of roots. Okay. Product of roots, okay. That is alpha dot beta dot gamma, okay. So their uh, their product of roots in quadratic equation was constant term divided by the coefficient of x square. Here we have minus constant term, minus constant term, okay. Upon coefficient of x cube, okay. What is constant of there? Obviously d upon a. So minus d upon a is the product of roots here, and uh, sum of roots is here minus b upon a. Here we have to add one more term there. That is sum of product of roots. Sum of product of roots we have here. That is sum of product of roots. What is sum of product of roots given here? That is sum of product of roots. How you can find that? That is obviously that is alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha is equal to what? That is equal to Coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x cube. We are present the coefficient of x square divided by coefficient of x cube. That is sum of roots. Now here sum of product of roots is called what? Coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x cube. What is that? Coefficient of x is there what? C and coefficient of x cube is there what? A. That means C of A is sum of product of roots. Remember the one uh, one thing. Sum of roots is there. Sum of product of roots. One is called the SOP and second is called the POS. One is called the SOP. What is SOP? Sum of products and POS is what product of sums. Suppose I will tell you an example. If A, B, C, and D we have, okay. If we are going to take sum of products, if we are going to take product of terms, A, B is one product. 
BC is another product, CD is another product, DA is another product. If we have to take some of these product terms, AB plus BC plus CD plus DA, that is called a sum of products, SOP. Now, if we have to take, if we are going to like this, if we are going to think, take uh, things like this, if we are going to take things like this, A plus B, okay, then B plus C, C plus D, D plus A, they are the sums. Now, product of sums, that means A plus B into B plus C into C plus D into D plus A, that means this is called product of sums. Now, what we are considering here, sum of products. We will take first product of roots, then we will take their sum. That sum of product of roots in cubic division is given by coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x cubed. So, this is a uh, little bit introduction regarding the cubic equation. So, general form of cubic equation is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to 0, where a is not equal to 0. Degree of a cubic equation is obviously 3. Since it has got a degree 3, so its number of roots will be 3. Okay, if we take an uh, if we have to observe the sum of uh, relation between the roots we will have is sum of roots will be alpha plus beta plus gamma that will be equal to that will be equal to minus coefficient of x square divided by the coefficient of x cube if we have to represent its uh, uh, relation between the product of roots then we have alpha dot beta dot gamma that will be equal to minus constant term divided by the coefficient of x cube if we have to represent its relationship between the sum of product of roots that's alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha that will be equal to co uh, you know, coefficient of x divided by the coefficient of x cube okay remember this once for all now, likewise, we have formulated the quadratic equation on the same basis. We will formulate the uh, cubic equation now. Okay, now formulation of cubic equation. Okay, formulation of cubic equation. Formulation of cubic equation. We know that. So let uh, the given sort of form of any cubic, cubic equation is like this: ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d is equal to zero. Okay. Now we just divide both sides by a. Dividing both sides by a. Okay. What we will get? We will get that is ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d upon a is equal to zero upon a. Okay. That is obviously equal to this a and a will cancel out, it will be x cube only, then it will be b upon a, x square, then it will be what? Then it will be c upon a, x plus d upon a, is equal to 0, okay? We will have like this, then what we will have? We will have x cube, for this we can write minus of minus b upon a, x square, plus c upon a, x plus, for plus we can write minus of minus d upon a is equal to 0, okay? So, x cube, okay, minus of, minus b upon a, if you just recapitulate, if you just rewind a little a bit, a uh, little minutes uh, behind, okay, what you will get? You just rewind your concept and you will come to know that minus b upon a, that's minus coefficient of x square divided by coefficient of x cube. That is basically sum of roots. So, we can have here, this is sum of roots, that is, uh, sum of roots S O R x square plus c upon a if you just recapture that this is sum of product of roots this is basically sum of product of roots okay S O P R okay this is S O P R x okay minus of minus d upon a what is minus d upon a that is minus constant of divided by the coefficient of x that is product of roots so you can have here product of roots okay is equal to zero okay so what you have this is the Formulation of cubic equation times x square, then sum of product of roots times x minus product of roots is equal to zero. This is the general formulation of a cubic equation. Okay, if you anybody will ask you that we have a three roots, three or you can have we have a three roots that's one, one, and one. These are the three equal roots of a given cubic equation. Can you uh, tell us that what kind of equation is this? You just give us the general formulation of the cubic equation. So we will say that this here alpha is one. Here alpha is equal to 1, 
alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma are all are equal to 1 now we'll take here some alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is equal to 3 okay then we have some operator of roots that is alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha okay that is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 okay that is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is equal to 3 okay then we have what proto of alpha dot beta dot gamma that's 1 dot 1 dot 1 that's equal to 1 okay so what will be the general formulation then then the general formulation of this cubic equation will be like this this is x cube minus of then we have what sum of roots sum of roots is there what 3 times x square then what we have then we have sum of product of roots sum of product of roots is here what that is equal to 3 x plus product minus product of roots minus product of roots is 1 is equal to 0 so this will be the general equation for the game of roots x, x cube minus 3x square plus 3x minus 1 is equal to 0 from this you can find out the roots of it uh, you can find out these kind of roots over there so then this is the general formulation for the cubic equation we have understood the general formulation of the quadratic equation that is there x square minus sum of roots times x plus product of roots is equal to 0 but here it is x cube minus sum of roots times x square then we have plus uh, sum of product of roots times x minus product of roots is equal to 0. This is the general formulation of for that cubic equation. Remember this once for all. Okay. This is very much important, very much beneficial for you. Now we will discuss the graph of a cubic equation. Okay. Okay, graph of a cubic equation. So y is equal to x cube. So let, let's consider this kind of a cubic polynomial over there. Okay. Now if we have to sketch its graph, how we are going to sketch that? By putting the value of okay. So this is this is O x and x dash here. And this is O y and y dash here. Okay. So these are the divisions here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. You will have here. Okay. Now, you just, if you have to sketch the graph, obviously you are going, you have to put the value of x and y over there. Okay. This is x, this is y. Put the value of x is 1, this is 1. Okay. Put the value of x is 2, this is 8. Put the x of minus 1, this is minus 1. Okay. So, put the value of x is minus 2, this is minus 8. Okay. If we sketch this kind of a points on the graph, what do we get? So this is 1, 1. Obviously, 1, 1 will be the point here, okay? Then there have, we have 2, 8. This is 2 and obviously 8 will be here like this, okay? Then what do we have? Then you have minus 1, minus 1. This is the minus 1, minus 1 over there. Minus 1, minus 1, okay? Minus 1, minus 1. Then what do we have? Minus 2, minus 8. This is minus 2 and this minus 8 will be like this, okay? So you will come to the its graph will be like this. Its graph will be like this. This graph and... Graph will be like this, and this will be just form this kind of a curve over here, okay? So, cubic equation, the graph of cubic equation will be like this, okay? So, if you are going to sketch it on your graph, you will, you, will, uh, you will get a figure or you will get a sketch like this, exactly like this. The graph moving ahead from and for passing through the origin and passing through the uh, third quadrant, okay? First from first quadrant, then origin, then third quadrant, okay? So this kind of a graph you will get for the cubic equation and this is a little bit of introduction which you need right now in 10th class standard okay so for the thing if you just want to we just want to study it keenly and you will study it in a higher classes okay now if we just compare the quadratic equation and cubic equation what we will get we will compare these two kind of equations now okay now we have this is quadratic equation quadratic equation okay and this is cubic equation okay now first we'll uh, discuss the uh, general equations this is quadratic equation for one this is ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero standard form okay and its standard form is what ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d is equal to zero okay this is the one uh, this is the one condition or one case in a quadratic equation or cubic equation for comparisons there. Okay. Second one is its roots will be number of roots will be equal to two. Here number of roots will be what? 
will be called the three obviously, okay? Because of n degrees and n rules. If this degree is obviously what? If this degree is two, then this degree is what? Three, okay? Then third what? It will have since two roots, it will have two roots say alpha, gamma, beta, and it will have say three roots that is alpha, gamma, beta, gamma, gamma, okay? Alpha, beta, and gamma, okay? Now, here relations, here sum of roots, sum of roots is equal to what? That is minus coefficient of x upon coefficient of x square, okay? And product of roots, product of roots here is equal to what? That is constant term, constant term upon coefficient of x square. And if you just check here, here we have sum of roots sum of roots is equal to what minus coefficient of x square divided by coefficient of x cube okay then we have sum of product of roots sum of product of roots that is equal to what that is equal to mm. don't be in a sleepy manner okay just look at that okay so that is equal to mm, coefficient of x upon coefficient of x cube okay then we have what product of roots product of roots okay so that is equal to what that is equal to minus constant term minus of constant term upon coefficient of x cube okay so this is the comparison you can compare with the quadratic equation and the cubic equation over there okay then talk about their graphs their graph is a parabola and that graph parabola will be like this that may be an upward one and that may be a downward one okay that may be a left hand one right hand one okay or that may be a left hand one okay for this you will get a graph like this okay the curve passing through this origin and passing like this okay this is the graph for the cubic equation and this is the graph for the this is the graph for the quadratic equation and one important thing which you can have in the quadratic equation and cubic equation that is what Their formulation. How to formulate this? We can formulate this x cube x square minus sum of roots times x plus product of roots is equal to zero. Okay. Now how to formulate this? We have this x cube minus sum of roots. Okay. Times x square. Then we have plus sum of product of roots alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha okay times x then we have minus product of roots alpha dot beta dot gamma is equal to zero so this is the formulation for the cubic equation and this is the formulation for the quadratic equation this is the one of the important formula which you can you, you, will, you will need in your mathematics okay hope that you have understood uh, cubic equation quadratic equation and the terminology is related to cubic equation and quadratic equations hope that you have understood all these kind of concepts and all these topics in quadratic equation here we stop our quadratic equation okay or here we terminate uh, the topics in quadratic equation because uh, that's this enough thing or enough topics we have discussed as far as your standard or your level is concerned okay if you have still any kind of a problem in any topic you can write that in our, in our comment section and i will just elucidate the topic accordingly okay till that have a joke on time ahead okay stay home stay safe